everyone hopefully you can hear me i did tests but it's always a an exciting test when the video actually starts and we get moving but thank you everyone for coming out to date night dance moves i'm super excited uh this should be fun and you know if it doesn't work the way i think it will then maybe we can still pull out it anyways but i'm excited i'm gonna wait maybe one or two more minutes and kind of go through some introductory stuff before i jump into the actual lesson um and just kind of make sure i have my settings up and ready to go and then i can see hear you and make sure that i'm catching everything with all of the different tabs that i have and all the different things that i'm working on so i will start with an introduction for those of you who don't know me which i don't know if there's many of you but if you don't my name is emily i am one of the instructors at 171 i specifically teach dance and that extends to east coast swing dance as well as ballroom which encompasses foxtrot and waltz so i was having a super time we had a great class going this year i definitely miss dancing with everyone and i miss the services and the community that we were building there so i'm very excited this as kind of a holdover until we can all get back together again but for those of you who have been maybe in the house with your spouse for a while Maybe this could be a fun thing that is, you know, not fighting over who has to do the dishes this summer, who has to do laundry. And as you saw, if you were part of the event page that, you know, there's also the end where you can just sit and drink your preferred beverage while I up and dance and teach. And that is totally acceptable. I'm hoping that maybe some of this stuff will be interesting to get you up and get you moving. And then when we are finally able to all be back together in a social setting that you know these moves will will come in handy and i'm looking forward to that looking forward to seeing everyone again i definitely i miss seeing everyone it's been a big change so while i'm going on about that part of it as we are still kind of dealing with some uncertainty i give 171 absolute humus props because they are again not only hosting to do this lesson but they are working what's off to provide across the board programming in arts in dance in ceramics and music and painting and all of the things and every i've talked to misses their students immeasurably and we want to find ways to continue to connect with you and and still interact and teach like we have been and just we have to find a new way to do it so if you like this programming or are interested in any other programming, definitely give 
21 a share a like a follow they're on instagram they're on facebook they're they have a great website so there's tons of information you can sign up for a mailing list and updated about different classes that they're running different live stream events like they're watching right now and there's just there's a lot of great stuff that's coming down the pipe and we would love to offer more programming that you guys are excited about again this is you know we teach because we love it and we would love to hear from you what you're missing and you know while we can't all get together in the same room we can at least work together and share our art and share our dance and and feel that of community that 171 is so great to have if you like my specific stuff and you want to follow me for more things that i am doing I can be found much anywhere on the internet as a swan named Emily. So that's a swan named Emily. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, some if it's still around, and Facebook, obviously. Hopefully, I'll be able to move this forward and bringing some other live videos, possibly on some other platforms, either through Uber or Twitch. So I can also maybe work on dance stuff or some art stuff, but just keep making videos and keep interacting with you guys in this way and yeah um so yeah but when it comes to 171 definitely check out their website get in touch with them if you have any questions you have any specific classes you'd like to see they're really great about getting back to people and and fielding the the feedback so awesome and again we we are trying to do our best to offer these things to everyone and if you would like to continue to see programming like this and other than like a PBS ad, but it really is. And we, we are supported by the public. So if you do that and would like to continue to see other things, you know, there's there's like donations and contributions to the arts that let us keep bringing this thing to you. And that's the end of my my PBS spiel. So I'm just double everything. And let's see. Okay. So it's going to, it's going to give me a every time I I pop in to check the chat and try and keep up with that. So, okay, let me jump over and monitor that. Okay. So, getting into the actual lesson for tonight, I am going to start with East Coast Swing. So there are multiple parts or multiple different types of swing dance. There's Lindy Hop, there's Shag, there's East Coast, there's West Coast, there's all these different ways that you can dance. And if you type in swing dance to YouTube, you will find an assortment of incredibly talented individuals doing all sorts of types of swing dance. And it's it's incredibly fun. So I definitely recommend that anyways. But the one that we will primarily be focusing on, well solely focusing on tonight, is East Coast Swing. So this step obviously is done between two people. And so I will be teaching the first half to the leader and working through your feet and what you're doing. And then I will switch over and I will teach to the followers. So you'll get both parts of that. And I'll try and make that as easy as possible. Uh, hopefully a lot of it will make sense, I'm hoping. Uh, but again, throw a message in the chat if it's not making sense or if something looks weird. Um, what I want you guys to make sure of is if you being ambitious and getting up and dancing with just make sure you have enough space and that there are no Legos or anything to trip on or step on that is going to negatively impact your dancing tonight because I certainly don't want that. My I took time this afternoon to make sure that I cleared off space in my living room so that, that we have this this space to dance and I wasn't tripping over any. Uh, I'm also going to move my microphone so hopefully you can hear me when I'm up and dancing. But again, you know, I'm going to pop back and forth and check the chat just to see if there's anything, any issues that you guys are experiencing or anything like that that I can hopefully fix. So I'm going to switch this over. It's not starting soon. It has started. You see my lovely floor. Okay. <laughs> So, I'm getting started. I'm going to do this. Like I said, I'm going to get started with instruction for leader part. So, this is the 
the half of the team that is working that is going to be initiating the, the moves and also kind of giving that lead to the follower as an invitation for the move that they would like to do. So whenever we are talking about the leader, I am always going to be starting with my left foot. So leader, left, nice, easy. Yes. So anytime, if for any part of this you get lost or off on the wrong foot, you can always remember going back to your left foot and making that easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch the video down, down so you can my specific foot work that I'm doing, but you'll still be able to hear my audio and then I can switch back as I talk to you about other stuff. So you can see my feet. So leaders, we are going to be starting with our left foot. This is my left foot. Hopefully the video isn't flipped because that's going to get really confusing. But the the basis of East Coast Swing is something called a triple step. Triple step is going to look like this. It is one, two, three. So it is three steps, triple step. I'll show you that again. So I'm starting with my left foot. I am traveling to my left. Stepping on my left foot first, I have left, right, Left. Now my weight is on my left foot and my right foot is free. The second half of the triple step, I'm going to be traveling to the right and I'm going to do another triple step. So I have right, left, right. Now my weight is on my right foot and my left foot is free. So each one of those sets of three is referred to as a triple step. So watching them put together, starting with my left foot, I have triple step heading back to my right tri triple step I'm gonna keep doing that a couple of times just kind of sing it out in my lovely voice to you guys see that hopefully it's not skipping too bad on the video so I have to the left and again these are the specifically for the leaders so starting with the left foot I have triple step heading back to my right triple step back to the left triple step Back to the right, triple step. Now, little things to think about. And again, I don't know how much you can see of my feet. I am kind of keeping my knees bent. I'm keeping them up a little bit towards the balls of my feet and not on my heels. If I'm back on my heels, it's a lot harder to move. So I want to kind of keep bent, but nice and easy. Again, swing is nice down in your knees, very relaxed, very fun. So doing the triple step just a couple more times. So starting with our left, we have triple step. Back to the right, triple step. Going back to the left, triple step. Back to the right, triple step. Okay, so the last part of this that is put all together makes up what is called the basic step is something called a rock step. Also be seen, it's gonna look like a ball chain. So I'm actually gonna turn to the side here so you can see my feet a little bit better. So this foot that I have up, this is my left foot. I'm placing my left foot right behind my right heel. I am putting weight onto that foot, onto the ball of my foot. I am lifting up my right foot and setting it back down. That looks like ball change or rock step. So if we put the whole move together, as you can see it, it is going to be a little step to the left, a triple step to the right, followed by a rock step, which I know sounds a little bit like the time warp. And if you want a time warp, I'm totally fine with that. And I want to see video. So starting with our left foot headed to the left, we have triple step back to the right, triple step, final ending it with rock step. Now, all of those moves together, that finishes a basic step. And as, as they might indicate to you, the basic step is the building block to all the other steps in swing. This is the step I'm going to keep repeating over and over and over again. So I'm going to do a couple of basics in a row so you can watch them and see how they flow. I'm also going to pivot a couple of times to see from a few different angles, and hopefully that might help. And then I'm going to check the chat. So starting, I'm just going to do basic steps, and I'm just going to do a few, and I will say out what I'm doing. So triple step. Triple step, rock step. Again, triple step, triple step, rock step. Triple step, triple step, rock step. 
that turn and face you guys now. So I'm still using my left foot first. Obviously the camera is going to look a little bit different just so you can see it from my front just in case that helps. So I have triple step. Oh, I just triple stepped off camera. <laughs> Rock, step. Here we go. Triple step. Triple step. Rock, step. Let me switch over. So the width of my steps are pretty much, I'm trying to keep them about the width of my shoulders. As we are starting slow, it's not as important, but as the music speeds up and you move faster with this, you want to make your steps smaller. You're also going to want to make sure that you're bending your knees. So as we are triple stepping, I'm keeping my steps nice and easy. Not only are they centered underneath me, which helps me keep my balance, it also allows me a little bit more flexibility to not only move around the space that I have available, but move in relation to the partner that I am dancing with. And keeps me nice, centered, balanced, and completely in control where my feet are. So give me a pause for a second and I'm going to the chat, which is a very weird part of this, but okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, so last little bit, and I'm still dancing as the leader. So as, as I am pulling a Billy Idol tonight and dancing by myself in my apartment, this lovely partner have to suffice for tonight so you guys can get an accurate rotation and just know that quarantine affects everybody in different ways. That's where we're going to leave it. So as the leader, I'm taking my left hand and holding my partner's right hand. I'm taking the palm of my hand and coming underneath so my, my partner is putting their hand up top. Now, while we are very relaxed, this group is nice and there is a little bit of tension in between. So if I go and push back on my partner, I would not be able to push the elbow of my partner past their rib cage. So I'm getting tension back. And that tension is really, really key because that, that as a leader, you are gonna lead moves successfully. As a follower, you're gonna be able to understand the lead that your leader is trying to instigate. So again, leaders, I have my left hand, my left foot, I have my follower's right hand. If I were to do a basic step with my partner, I have triple step, triple step, rock step. And this is the last little bit that's really important, and I think you could see it in the video. When I did my rock step, when I did my ball change, I did not step it way, way out back and do a big rocket kick. That's not what we want for a rock step. For a rock step, we really want our left foot tucked in nice and close behind, and we just want a little step. Not only do we not have time to do that huge step, it also will pull you back away, partner. And ideally, a lot of these moves succeed because of the connection that you have with your partner. So you don't want to necessarily lose that connection every time you rock step. So watching the basic step again, one more time. So I have trip. Triple step, triple step, rock step. Last little thing, depending on the partners that you have, there is possibility, there is the possibility that there will be a height between the two of you, as there is with my partner and me tonight. So when it comes to where we're holding the hands, we want it to be at the average of our waist. So you want that really to be relaxed from the shoulder, nice and easy, so that the tension that you're getting is really really in the fingertips between the partner and not hold up and very tense up here towards your shoulders. So keep that nice and relaxed nice and easy. And that's a good moment as you are, as you are working on steps and dancing with your partner, take a moment to breathe and relax, take out your shoulders and make sure that you're not holding your tension all up in your shoulders because you are nervous. And one final thing that I'm going to switch over to the fluffy is that even though it might you feel better to watch what your feet are doing they are doing movement whether you watch them or not so for the sake of this dance and the cool style factor that it is I want to make sure that our heads are up our chin is up and I will know when I see you in person if your chin is up but your eyes are looking so I want you to have that confidence to look up you don't even have to look at your partner. you can look over their shoulder you can look at all the other things around your house that you're sick of seeing you don't 
don't have, but you need to look up just a little bit. So, final little bit of leaders. So I have my left hand, I'm starting with my left foot, bending my knees, I'm nice and relaxed, I'm looking up, and I'm dancing my basic step, nice and easy, back and forth with my partner. So, if people are musically inclined, for the counts, the actual counts for the steps that I'm doing are one and two, three and four, five, six. It's easy for me to say triple step, triple step, rock step, but those are the actual numerical counts for it. So again, quick pause as I hop over and check chat. Okay, so now that I've talked about the leader part, I'm gonna switch over to the other partner part of this, and that is the follower. So this is the part where it's gonna get a little bit tricky because again, you only have my feet to look at, so we have to use a little bit of imagination. But hopefully, if you have two humans or more than humans at your house, you get to do this with a different partner or a partner at least. So when it comes to the follower, you are going to be standing facing your partner and you are going to be mirroring them. So as your leader is taking off to the left, followers are going to start and they're going to start to the right. So I'm going to switch over so you can see my feet for followers. Okay. So like I said with the leader, we're going to start with our right foot doing a triple step eight. The Triple step the same, you're just traveling in different directions. So starting to the right, heading to the right, I have a full step. Now my weight is on my right foot. I'm traveling to my left, starting with my left foot. Triple step. And then followers, your rock step is your foot tucking in behind your left foot, going up onto the ball of your right foot and setting your left foot back. So I'll turn so you can see that. So taking my right foot, place behind my left foot, right in the heel, keeping in myself and centered ball change and again the ball change part of this does not have to be a big step up and stop it is just a nice transfer of weight up to down so starting to follow our feet i have triple step triple step and our step rock step again triple step triple step Rock, step, triple step, triple step, rock, step. So if I count it, one and two, three and four, five, six. Same thing again. You do not want to step too far back and pull back from your partner. You also really want to keep those knees nice and bent, keeping yourself centered over your feet and trying to keep the distance that you're stepping no wider than your shoulder width. So one last time, triple step, triple step, rock, step. Okay. Switch back. Nope, nope, try to switch back. Did you switch back? There we go. Okay, so followers, you will be taking your right hand, placing it in your partner's left hand. I'm going over the top and in to partner's hand. And again, relaxing at my shoulders, keeping my knees bent. I'll be traveling to the right as my partner travels to the left. So I have triple step, triple step, rock step. Now, it is very easy for me to keep my arm relatively immobile because only half of this partnership is actually dancing tonight. But something you really want to try doing is this, this type of motion. It can be very distracting and it can also be very unclear to the followers if the leader is trying to do something or if the follower is trying to take the lead and then everybody gets confused and ideally we want no fighting <laughs> at the end of this it should be fun if you mess up you able to laugh about it and laugh with each other take a second and get back on the beat of the music and start it again so Dancing as a follower, one more time, I have my right foot going, so I have triple step, triple step, rock step, triple step, triple step, 
rock, step. So as you move along, as the music gets a little bit faster, you notice that I was already kind of doing it. I start to make my steps a little bit smaller, just a little contained, so that as I get going to music, that sounds triple step, triple step, rock step, triple step, and much faster. I don't have to travel as far, which means I don't have to eat up as much time, and I can really be precise about the moves that I am doing and executing. So I'm gonna hop back, check chat. Okay. That looks good. Okay. So now we're going to try <laughs> really crazy thing. And I'm actually going to try and teach you a move that the leaders lead and the follower follow. And again, I realize that we're going to have to use a little bit of imagination here because, you know, there is not subpar, but has some, some lacking. I think one to four legs is probably a weird thing when you're talking about footwork. So the move that I'm going to teach you, again, I absolutely recommend that if you are curious about more of these, I can one, not only record an actual video with another human of me doing this move, but probably find videos that show this same move and be able to post them in the notes for this show so you can see what it looks like when you have two humans dancing. But because it's Friday night and it's a date night, then, you know, we should at least try and do a move together. And again, if it goes terribly, then we never do it again. So, getting up. For now, for the demo, I'm going to have my lovely partner, the leader, and I'm just going to kind of show you, show you, what the move is going to look like. One other little bit that I need to teach you that's going to be kind of weird, but we're again, we're going to go with it. So I'm dancing as the follower. My clothes tree is dancing as the leader. So as a follower, I have my right hand and my partner's left hand. This position I'm standing right now is known as open position or single hand hold. Again, what's great about swing, especially East Coast swing, a lot of these moves very closely named to the thing that you are doing. So open position, we are open from each other. Again, single hand hold, only one of your hands is being held. So the other position that I'm going to is something called closed position. And I love because not only is it a fun position in swing, it's also going to be something that we talk about in the second segment of this when we move to ballroom. So what's great about closed position is the right hand and the leader's left hand as they are, stay exactly the same. And they stay exactly at the average of our waist, exactly hanging nice and loose between us. These do not move. One thing that does change is followers. You're gonna take your left hand, you are placing it on your partner's right shoulder. And again, this is very important. I am, especially in this partnership, I am supporting the weight of my so that I have my own weight here. I am not expecting my partner to hold me up while you're dancing. I am really keeping that arm strong. Leaders, because I can't get my leader to demo, you are taking your right hand, putting it underneath your partner's arm and putting your right hand on her shoulder blade. So you're aiming for the shoulder blade. This is a really nice place because it gives you not only that nice arm that we have here, but it also allows you to lead a lot of these moves very easily. And as we progress, and if hopefully you guys like this class and we end up seeing you later, take an advanced class, there are a lot of other moves that build off of that connect you have with leader's right hand, followers, shoulder blade. So, yeah, going to get into followers with your left hand and your partner's right shoulder. Leaders are going to put their arm on their followers' shoulder. And again, hands stay as they were. So this is referred to as, as closed position. So we're in closed. <clears throat> There's one tiny, tiny change that happens when we do the basic enclosed position. And that is because we are in connection with each other at both points of our arm. When we go to rock step, if we are rock stepping and pulling away from each other, we are going to lose that connection. 
So as we go to rock step, we are gonna ever so slightly, less than 45 degrees, rotate our hips and our shoulders out from our partner. So as I'm doing my triple step, triple step, triple step, and my rock step is going to allow me to fan ever so slightly open. And then as I go to take my next triple step, I'm going to turn back to parallel with my partner, and again, another triple step. So I should stay small, <clears throat> little slight change. You really only do that pivot in closed position, and it's just so you can maintain that contact. It should be very, very subtle, and is definitely not something you want to highlight as far as the move. So just a quick recap. We've got open position, which is single hand hold, and then we have closed position. The move that I'm going to teach you comes from closed position, but it finishes in open position. So we will start in the closed position that I just did you and end in the open position that we learned first. So this is something called the arch turn. Probably should have tested it with my partner before we were live, but hey. Here. So when it comes to this lead, it is named the arch turn because the leader is going to be lifting their left arm up and with its connection with the follower's arm creates an arch. The followers are moving underneath the arm and coming to finish out in open position. So you're traveling underneath the arch, traveling through. So I'm going to start with the leaders, and we're going to, again, we're going to win, but I'm going to start with the fun bonus for you leaders is that your feet in this move do not change. So you have your regular basic step of triple step, triple step, rock step. Those feet are going to stay exactly the same for this whole move. So I'm going to pantomime as if I'm now the leader and I'm my partner. So here's my right arm on my partner's shoulder blade, my left hand holding their hand. So here's a basic first. Here's my rock. Here's the arch. triple step, triple step rock step. Feet are exactly the same, but you might have known my arms were doing a bit more. So that's where the real lead is coming from. The majority of the moves that you will lead as a leader in East Coast Swing are going to happen on the rock step of the previous triple step. So let me break it down a little bit so it makes a little bit more sense. So we have our, our basic step, which is triple step, Triple step, rock step. That's the basic step. So when I say, so if I do two of them together, I have triple step, triple step, rock step, triple step, triple step, rock step. So that was two. When I say it comes on, the lead comes on the previous rock step, it means that if I was going to do those two triple steps again, like I did, I have triple step, Triple step, rock, lead, triple step, triple step, rock, rock step. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I'm going to try and make it as easy as I can. Let me just check, make sure nobody's panicked. I don't want to panic. Okay. All right. So, leaders, I'm going to turn around so you can see what my arms are doing during this. So let me pull this back so you can see. So I have, again, while I'm facing you guys, I have my right arm on my partner's left shoulder blade. I have my left hand down holding my partner's right hand. So, mm -hmm. like so what I'm doing is I'm going to take my left hand, I'm going to raise it up to form that arch. There, I'm going to take my right hand and gently press on my partner's shoulder blade as she moves underneath the arch and turns around. I will finish my triple step and rock step. So watching as I'm doing it. So I have, here's my basic. Here's my lead. And the end of the move. Now watching it with me facing you. Pretend there's a partner here. So I have, here's my basic. Here's my triple step. Triple step, rock, lead, triple step, 
triple step, rock, step. So when it comes to the actual lead, on my rock step, I am taking my left hand and raising it up. I do not start to apply pressure to my partner's back until we begin that next triple step. So I have rock step, triple step is when I'm actually taking my hand that's on my partner's shoulder blade and helping them move through the arch. I like to say that in lifting this up during the rock step, this is your invitation to turn. So while you are going to assist your partner ever so slightly in the turn that she is doing, you are not the sole reason that she is making that turn. So you're lit up for the invitation and then you are gently helping as your partner is turning around. So I'm gonna do the whole thing again with a basic first, so triple step, triple step, rock, rock. On that rock step, I'm gonna initiate the lead for the arch turn and then complete the rest of the arch. So I'm starting in closed position, I'm standing as the leader. Here is basic step, triple step, rock, lead, triple step, push her through, triple step, finish rock step. So again, you can see once I have moved my partner's arch, I let go with my right hand. It returns to my side I'm going to maintain connection with my left hand. I am keeping get down. <laughs> I am keeping my left hand up above my partner, but I'm allowing my fingers to move loosely so that as she is turning underneath my hand, I am not gripping onto her fingers and breaking her fingers or her shoulder or anything of her arm because that's bad and you shouldn't do that. Please don't break each other during this move. So keeping the fingers nice and easy, letting my partner turn around. Once she has finished turning around, back facing me, I can have my arm back down at my waist, relaxed in open position. So I'm gonna dance it one more time and then I'm gonna talk to the followers who are doing a little more in this move. So getting into my leader position, left hand, Right hand on my partner's back. Here's my basic triple step, triple step, rock lead, triple step, she threw, triple step, return to open. Back in open position. So switching over to my followers. So again, you are going to feel on your rock step, you're going to, if your partner raise your right arm, that is your indication of which lead your partner is initiating. You do not have to start to move until the triple step that starts your next basic step. So I will see if I can dance so you can see it. So I have I'm dancing along and I have my basic step. So triple step, triple step, I feel rock lead. The next thing that I'm gonna be doing is dancing off on my right like I have been. I'm going to do a triple step. I'm going to plant my weight on my right, bend my knee, and I'm going to turn clockwise 360 degrees without putting my foot down. As soon as I put my foot down, I'm going to triple step on my left foot and wrap on my right like normal. So let's do all of that one more time. There's a lot of information. So as a follower, I have my Rock, Lee. So I have the arm up. So I'm triple stepping my right foot. Triple step, turning. Triple step, rock step. I'm going to switch it over to the feet view so you can see feet. Okay. So as a follower, like I said, starting with my foot. So I'm going to do a basic first. So triple step, trip. Full step up here, basic rock step, beginning in the move, triple step, turn, triple step, rock step. Now, what's really nice about this is if at any point, especially as I'm turning on carpet and not turning well, if I go to turn and my foot comes down, go back so you can see it, and my left foot goes down, as soon as my left foot hits, I start triple stepping and continue to turn myself around back to facing my partner. And then rock step, normal, facing back, face to face, parallel with my partner. So I'm going to do those feet one more time. So I'm going to do a basic first by the feet for the arch turn. So here's my basic 
trip step trip full step back step trip full step turn trip full step rock step now something notice with this is that there are no additional steps or counts for the turn so the turn is being smushed in between your followers two triple steps so it sounds like triple step turn triple step rock step this is why it is really 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 important to bend your knee when i go for that turn i'm doing triple step planting my weight on it but bending my knee trying to engage my, my core so that i can turn on my one foot if it helps you to drag your toe your left foot around to keep you balanced that's fine just remember you have to then step on your left foot to finish your triple step. So I'm gonna try and put it all together with my fake partner so you can kind of see what it looks like. And we'll try. So again, we are gonna start in closed position. I'm dancing as the follower. We are going to do basic step followed by the arch turn. So here we go. So starting in closed position, here's basic. I have triple step, trip full step, rock, lead, triple step, turn, triple step, rock, step. Yay! Okay, pause for a sec. Hop over to chat. Okay. See? Hopefully this is all still making sense. So, I'm going do that whole thing again one more time just so you can see it again so we have leader follower in closed position going to do a basic followed by the arch turn so here's my basic triple step triple step rock lead, triple step turn triple step rock step now you'll notice I'm kind of moving my left hand followers left hand through that arch as I'm moving through it, that helps me to turn. The only thing I want to caution you guys is, if you're doing that, make sure that you are not taking yourself in that direction because you are now walking away from your partner and he will be sad. So when I am moving my arm through, I'm also conscious of the fact that I'm not only just turning on my foot, but turning to try and get back to facing with my partner. Leaders, because you are not, not turning in this, it will help your partner if you are keeping your triple steps nice and easy, nice and tamed. You are also allowing her to have this connection here as a strong point for her to grip onto. If she needs to lose her balance, you can kind of help balance her. You are also paying attention to her. If for some terrible reason she starts to tip over, you can catch her. Bonus points. Always good to catch your partner for yourselves, please. So, <laughs> one final, final little bit that I'm going to teach you about this, and then we will conclude the swing portion of the night. We'll take a break, we'll come back, and we'll switch over to ballroom. But this last bit is so now, just to recap we have covered the basic step, which is triple step, triple step, rock step, in open position. We've also covered the basic step in closed position and still triple step, triple step, rock step, but with that slight, slight, slight twist on the rock step. And you have now learned the arch turn, A-R-C-H, arch turn. Then you can remember that because you are going underneath the arch, invitation to turn, spinning around, back in open position. So the one last thing that I want to teach you do these moves as a set of moves is how to move open position to closed position. Because remember, the basic that we learned first was being done in open position, and the arch turn that I just taught you is done closed position. So, <clears throat> switching back over, I'm now dancing as the leader. So, with the connection that I have, with my left hand that is down at the average of my waist. I am going to ever so gently tug straight back towards my hip 
on my rock step. So again, dancing along, triple step, triple step, rock. Step. This is where that slight tension between partners is important because if I, as a leader, go to tug and my partner has noodle arms, I'm going to tug and that's going to happen. So if we've got that little bit of tension, I tug her and she understands that in that rock step, I'm then going to hand low on my next triple step, move my right arm up to my partner's shoulder blade. My partner bring their arm up, place it on my shoulder, and we are now in closed position. So if I pantomime that with my partner, I have triple step, triple step, rock, tug, come in. I'm going to take another triple step for that. I'm also going to do another base. So I can think and prep, and then I'm going to rock, lead, triple step, turn, triple step, rock, step. So now, with that, you have enough moves to do a basic and open. Lead your partner in a closed position. Do another basic. Get your mind ready. Lead your partner into an arch turn, staying closed, ending and open, back where we started. And you can now do a combination of moves in East Coast dance. I'm going to take a quick drink because I'm out of breath. Too hydrate. Check the chat and then we will take our quick class and we will switch over to ballroom. Okay. Okay. So it looks good. Let me So the one other thing I was going to say is I was playing music, but I think because of the delay and Facebook Live and possible lagging, I don't know if it's going to work, but I would recommend that a really nice and easy song, not only easy to dance to, but easy to find, and is a nice tempo for what we just learned tonight is Island in the Sun by Weezer. So I'm going to put it on and I'm going to dance to it a little bit and sing to it a little bit, but because I think it might be painful musically and painful with the mind everything, I'm only going to do about 30 seconds of it. Then I will stop, put us on break, and then I'll back and we'll switch over to ballroom. So let's see how we can get this to not be terrible. Or you might not be able to hear it at all, so it might not even be an issue. So, so when I am snapping along to the music, which again, if this is on a delay, this is terrible. My snap correspond to the beats in the music, and they also correspond to the first step of my triple step. So it's triple step, triple step, rock step, triple step, triple step, rock step. Right now, it has the follower part. Same thing goes for the leader. Rock step. Keeping it nice and easy. It makes you feel so fine. Okay, so I'm going to stop the music and switch to break and give us about five minutes and then I'll be back.
everyone. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, welcome. <laughs> you got a whole spiel at the beginning that you can go back to, but I'll give you a quick recap. So now we are going to switch over to Foxtrot. And I went back and forth between if we should do Waltz or if we should do Foxtrot, but I think Foxtrot's going to be a little bit easier. But again, if you guys end up liking this and want me to do more, we can obviously do another session where where I walk through Waltz and maybe course someone who quarantined with me to be my partner so you guys can actually have two dancing. Although, I mean, I'm pretty set, so maybe that'll be fine. So just a quick recap. Uh, <laughs> my name is Emily. I'm on behalf of 171 Cedar Art Center in Corning, New York. And I am the visual arts teacher as well as one of the dance teachers. And if you like this programming and want to see more, follow support, look at their website, get on their mailing list, get in touch with one one because they are working really, really hard to put out more pro pro digitally, offering some zoom classes, offering challenges, just trying to keep connected with the community and doing stuff like this. So, so if you like it and enjoy it, please, you know, send them kudos because the there is working their butts off to, to get everybody connected and get this happening. So yeah, and I, I love them. So <laughs> if you couldn't tell that already, I'm very happy to teach there and teach on behalf of them. So that's great. And if you want to see more of the stuff that I do, you follow me personally. Um, I am a swan named Emily, A-S-W-A-N-N-A-M-E-D-E-M-I-L-Y, a swan named Emily across the internet. I do a lot, a lot of, as well as dance stuff. So I'm trying to post more of that and maybe make some more videos and, and do some more live streams. So if you want to support that, follow me there and definitely throw a like to 171 and that so like i said we're going to switch over and move to foxtrot so in the ballroom class that i teach we split it up into foxtrot and waltz and there are a lot of moves in foxtrot that have similar footwork two steps in waltz so again if you guys end up running a waltz class and you tune in again some of this stuff will seem familiar and kind of carry over what i'm going to do again like i did in the earlier part of dream is I'm going to break down each part dancing as the part of the couple that I am explaining. So I'll first show the leader, their feet are doing, switch over to the followers, and then show you where the arms are and some of the components to leading and following. So, and we're going to actually, this is important, we're going to switch gears a little bit. So everything I, I said about being relaxed and down in your knees and, you know, cool and hip and swing, we're going to throw some of that kind of out the window because ballroom is much more pulled up. This is much more pulled up, much more proper. This is your big ballroom dance that's happening in your 50s musical with these great skirts and everybody moving around the floor. And it's, we'll say a little bit more majestic. So there's a, there's a lot more pulled up feel to that. And the, the nature of your lead is going to be a little bit more structured. So when I'm talking about that, I'm going to bring that back around and mention it. But again, if at any point during this, you have questions, or if anything I said didn't make sense, or if you need me to show something again, I'm going to periodically check the chat and try and answer your questions and try and give you feedback on that stuff. But if not, then I'm going to get right into it. And I'm going to start with the leader feet. And I'm actually going to switch. So you can see, actually, I'm going to demo it first up so you can see and I'll switch to my feet. So if you've been following along from the beginning, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I know this is a lot and kind of for a Friday night, but hey, Friday nights need to be silly. So as we started with the left foot and swing, we're going to start with the left again in Foxtrot. The difference is this dance, instead of traveling side to side like we did in swing, you are going to travel in a box. And the step that I'm going to teach you right now is called the box Again, following with our idea of naming steps with what we're actually doing with our feet, which I'm a big fan of. So just talking about my feet, leaders, I'm going to start stepping straight forward with my left foot. I am then going to stop all forward movement and move directly to my side, stepping with my right foot. Step right, bring my left foot together. The weight is now on my left foot. I'm picking up my right foot. I'm stepping back. Back onto my right, my left foot is straight. I am stepping directly to the side, side together. So 
Let me switch over to feet view so you can see that a little bit clearer. I'm going to talk more about the feet. Okay, so leaders, like I said again, starting with our left foot, stepping forward, forward. Our right foot is free, so now I'm going to step directly to the side, side together. Weight is on my left foot, so my right foot is free. Right foot is stepping directly, back, reaching back from my hip, stepping right. Left foot is free, side together. So if you do this movement on the floor, I am going all the way around in a box traveling directly forward moving directly to my side traveling directly back moving back to my original position so again looking at those feet stepping forward with my left foot we have forward step right, side together right foot is free stepping back with our right side together now the specifics of these feet for foxtrot assign in counts of four. So this one is going to, the first half of the box is going to be one, two, three, four. Second half of the box is going to be one, two, three, four. So to make the whole box, you will have eight counts. This is broken up into slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. So what that actually looks like is when I step forward, I have my slow side together, quick, quick, stepping back, slow, quick, quick. To break that down numerically, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Saying it again with the slow, quick, quick, I have slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Those steps, let me switch over. Those steps make up the box step. You travel in a box, there are two halves to it. There's the first half where as a leader you're forward and the second half where you're traveling, you're stepping back on yourself and together. And again, because it is a square, it is a box, you are ending back in the original position you started. So one last time watching it so you can kind of see me. I'm stepping forward, slow, quick, quick, slow, Quick, quick. Obviously, space constraints constraints are a thing. So please be careful as you're moving around your apartment because you are stepping backwards. Please make sure you have everything cleared so that you can see where you're going and not crashing into anything. So one last time, between the feet, I have my as the leader, starting with my left foot, traveling forward. I have slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. One more time with one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are the feet. Now the second half is because almost all of the ballroom moves come from closed position. If you were here for the previous segment, you learned about closed position. However, this closed position is slightly different. But to start with, I'm now going to switch over and have my partner dance as the leader. So, leaders, you have your left hand that instead of hanging down at your waist like it did in swing, is going to come up and be up comfortably from your shoulder. So, again, I have my left hand is comfortably up from my shoulder, supported, and I have my hand underneath where my partner can put their hand in mine. So, that's my left hand. What does stay the same is my leader's right hand will be coming up and again making contact with the followers left shoulder blade so your position will look like this and you'll notice that my posture has changed I'm standing up a lot taller I'm pulled up more I'm not down in my knees and I'm not relaxed as much now what I want you to be pulled up and I want you to be supported it doesn't need to be tense this can still be fun this can still be a fun couple partner dance but I am keeping what's referred to as the frame very solid. And I swear, if you watch Dirty Dancing and he talks about your dance space and my dance space and the frame, it's because it's real. And it will make this so much easier. If you find that you are having trouble with your leads, it is usually because that frame has started to collapse and you're, you're trying to lead and only your arms are moving and it's just not good. So I will harp on again. And if you end up coming to class, 
class in the future. You will hear me talk about it then. And it's about strength of this frame. And the other part of that, not only do I have strength throughout my arms and in contact with my partner, I am also moving forward with my whole frame. So I am not just stepping forward with my and leaving my upper body behind. I am actually moving forward with my entire frame towards my partner. That is an essential part of the lead. And it is how you will see couples dance without really, they don't talk to each other, they're not winking at each other or giving them novel cues. It is with that power of frame that they have and the connection between them and their hands and then the connection on one's back to the other that really make that nonverbal leading possible. So adding in the frame, so this is, lead, I'm dancing as the leader now. This is my right hand going on my partner's shoulder blade, my left hand up, that connection with my partner. I'm stepping forward with my left side to get back with my right side to get. And again, really thinking about not just moving my arms out in front of me and stepping my foot, but really actually just moving that whole frame forward. And it's going to sound silly, but there is a little bit of that kind Kind of glide that is happening with it and that does come from bending my knees so, so when not down in a bent knee like I was in swing I am kind of pushing off and easing into the steps that I am taking for this <coughs> so first time acting as the leader right hand on followers back left connected here stepping forward side together back side together slow quick quick slow quick quick one last thing one two three four five six seven eight <clears throat> so that is all of the leader half that's which are to followers and if you're following along at home you can probably that just like with swing the followers are going to kind of mirroring and reacting to what their leader is doing. So as a follower, as your leader is stepping forward with the left foot, followers are gonna be stepping back with their right foot. So followers, you're stepping back, right. You're then stepping directly side, left, right. Your left foot is now free. You're traveling directly forward towards your partner, forward with your left, side together. Switching over to feet view. So followers, starting with your right foot, stepping directly back, slow, quick, quick, stepping forward, slow, quick, quick. Now, <clears throat> you kind of saw me do it, and that was only because I was losing my balance, but what you want to try to avoid doing, both leaders and followers, is when you go to step back, try not to do a touch before you step side together. Each step should have your weight transferred onto it. And then you should want to try not to do any sort of touch or drag step in between because it's going to throw off your counts and it could also throw off your balance. It could also throw off the combination that you have with your partner and make it harder for them to lead. So, again, followers, stepping back with your right foot. We have slow, quick, quick, stepping forward, slow, quick, quick again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time, starting stepping back. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. <clears throat> so, followers, you are going to have your right hand in connection with your partner. I am taking palm to palm and I am letting my fingers fall over top and I am put back against my partner. Again, that tension that I talked about in swing, it's the same thing. By having that connection, you're going to have not only I think it's fun and you have more opportunity to do some neat moves, but you're also making it easier for a leader to lead you. And if you're both dancing as beginners, anything you can do to make it easier for both of you is something that I definitely want. So really thinking about that connection there is important. Other thing again, this came from swing to ballroom. Ballers is making sure 
that you have strength in that left arm and that you are keeping it held up and you are not dragging your partner down because you keep dancing in closed position for the entirety of these dances in ballroom. Shoulder will get tired and it will it will start to impact you both. So really making sure that you keep that strength in the shoulder, support your own weight, holding your hand up there. You pause real quick like a chat. Okay. So obviously this one's a little bit more difficult to put all together with my partner, but again, making sure that we're in together as a couple, we have that tension between us, we are each keeping our own frame up, and as my leader is stepping forward, my follower is really making sure that you're reaching back from your hip. Now, if you can't tell because of the size of the things in my apartment, I am not that tall, and I can dance with taller partners because I am really stretching that leg back. I am reaching as far as I can to step back and see, even as I go to step back, I am bending that knee a little bit to help myself push back so I can step there and then stepping forward side together. So the goal, obviously, is to never step on your part feet. It's probably going to happen. I I'm sorry, whoever is the step on versus the step E, and just apologize because it's going to happen. But there are things that you can do to kind of help that. And I said because the <clears throat> first thought is that leaders, you're going to want to take smaller or shallow steps because you are afraid of stepping on your partner and exactly where the strength in this frame comes from. Because I am moving forward with my whole frame, I'm actually using that frame to help push my partner back and that is helping her to not only take a large step and keep her balance, but it's getting her feet out of my way. So as taking that first step forward, she knows enough and she push back on me to take her step back to move out of the way. Same followers, when you are taking that step forward, <clears throat> keep that frame strong because you'll be able to tell that strength and frame how far your partner is stepping back and you will know not to step stepping on their foot. Especially partners if you're wearing heels, Either of you, heels hurt to be stepped on, Not feels good, but again, just trying to keep everybody's toes intact. I would maybe recommend practicing some of these in shoes. Um, with any of these dances, either swing or ballroom, I absolutely recommend. Sneakers are great, dance shoes are great, boots are great. Try and stay away from shoes that have open backs, like clogs or crocs, because as you go to step some of these moves, you can step your foot out of it, and that just makes it tougher. So something that is, Closed around your foot, comfortable. If you are more comfortable dancing in heels, absolutely can. Just again, make sure your area is clear and that you're not going to have anything that's going to cause ankles to get back. So, again, I'm going to try and, and dance kind of both parts a little bit so you can see it. So, I'm going to start as a follower and I'm going to start and pretend I'm going to step back. So, I got my slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick. Quick, slow, quick, quick, one more. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Now again, flipping over and dancing as the leader. So switching my hands to left hand connection, right hand on the back, stepping forward, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Then I'm gonna try and play just a little bit of music so you can kind of get a feel for that and give you another song that works well. And then I will actually wrap this one up a little bit early because without a partner, it's kind of tough to keep going with some of the other moves. But like I said, if you guys liked this and you would like some ballroom tips and stuff, I can absolutely try and convince you to wear a mask and sanitize with me and, and teach you some more stuff. So let me up a song. So this is Nice and Easy by Frank Sinatra, per request. So I'm going to kind of sing along so you can hear the counts to it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 
Again, counts might be a little bit off. But his beat, you have slow, quick, 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 slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. So I'm dancing as a follower right now. No, I lied. I'm dancing as a leader. I'm not holding my frame up. So, I really like Frank Sinatra for a lot of this, especially some of his stuff that is nice. And it's like that one was nice and easy. The only thing I will warn you is that our lovely Frank sometimes likes to play with tempo a little bit. And that can kind of be tricky as you're learning because you're so quick, quick, slow, quick, quick will start to get a little bit off. But again, I can recommend some songs you would like to practice too. But yeah, I think considering that it's a little bit after 8.15, and I talked a whole bunch. I'm probably going to wrap this up, but I can't thank you guys. This was really fun. I wasn't sure how all of this was going to um, So I appreciate everyone tuning in and being in chat and just supporting me and supporting 171 in this. So absolutely, again, if you liked this stuff, leave a positive comment. It's nice. It helps us. If you didn't like it, you don't need to say anything. And if you have other stuff that you'd like to see, other programming, definitely 171's website or send them messages about things that you'd like to see. And yeah, thank you, everyone. I hope you had a fun date night and that you get to do other fun stuff after this. So thanks for getting up and dancing with me. And hopefully I will see you guys again soon. So thanks. Good night. <laughs>